Hello, it's Shari here today, and I'm going to be making this reveal wheel card using one of my very favorite sets, Happy Harvest. So I'm going to start by stamping out the images that I want to use. I'm going to be coloring with Copic markers, so I'm going to use some Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm going to use the cute scarecrow, of course. Um, some of the pumpkins, there's a big one and a small one, as well as the three different birds in this set. So I'm just going to stamp it out with that jet black ink on some Nina Solar White cardstock. And I'm going to stamp out quite a few images. I'm probably not going to use all these, but I just like to have multiple ones in case I mess up my coloring. Now what I wanted to do before I started coloring the scarecrow here is add some details. So I've got a very thin Copic multiliner. This is the smallest one. It's a .03. And I'm just adding some patches to his shirt. So just kind of like those are patching up the elbows or patching up any holes in his shirt. And I'm going to add some to the overalls as well. And I just think this adds some nice extra detail to this image. It also gives you a place to add a little more color to him. And I'll add some details to his straw hat too after I color that in and I'll show you that as well. So I'm going to be doing a lot of coloring in super speed here, but I just wanted you to see how I colored this scarecrow. So I'm doing a straw hat there with a Y23 and a YR23 just for some shading in a Y35 to kind of shade that out. Now I decided to wait to do my little straw details till after I was done, just because I was afraid it might smudge, but it, it doesn't smudge. Um, but I just wanted to get the color on there first. Now I'm going in with some R's for some shading on his shirt. And then I'm also gonna use these same colors that I'm using for the straw and the shirt as part of the patches. And you can see I've also added a little green in there too. So now I'm coloring his overalls like they're blue jeans using a couple blue colors here. I'm just gonna add some shading and then kind of pull that shading out a little bit because that marker I used for the shading was very dark. And then I'm just gonna add some sort of flesh tones to his face. So I'll pull in that blue that his pants are for the band on his hat as well. And then because his hat is straw, I didn't want his hair to be the same color. So I went in with a brown and then for the rest of the straw, I'm using a yellow and then also putting that brown sort of right at the cuff of the pants and at the cuff of the shirt and blending it out. So it does look like straw, but it still has the brown that's in the hair. And then finally, I can color in that post he's on. Now I'm gonna go back in with that Copic multi-liner and add just some little hash marks. So I think that looks like straw to his hat. I just think he's super cute like this. I also gave him some rosy cheeks you can see there. And then now I'm coloring in the pumpkins and I started more with a yellowy color and then I added in the oranges. So I think it keeps it from being too terribly orange. I like using the yellow as my lightest. Now I'm using some warm grays for the crow. You can see it's a W5 and a W7. I never use a black. So here I've got some corn. I stamped it out in sunflower, carrot, and artichoke inks and went ahead and cut those out. I'm going to set all those pieces aside that were die cut. Now I've got a piece of Distress Watercolor cardstock and my reveal wheel here and I'm just going to cut that out and now I'm going to do some Distress ink blending. So my idea is to have sort of a autumn sunset background. So I've got scattered straw and dried marigold. And these are kind of be closer to the ground where the sun is setting. Now for the sky, I've got some shaded lilac, which I really love how the shaded lilac looks with blues. So I've got shaded lilac and some tumbled glass. And I'm just starting at the top and working my way down. So where the blue and the orange, the dried marigold meet, I decided I didn't like the way the color was coming out. 
So I added in a little bit of worn lipstick just between those two. So a little bit pinky. And I think that really helps with the orange and the yellow turning into the blue. You can see I keep covering up the bottom. I'm going to make some straw for the bottom basically. So I've cut another piece of that watercolor cardstock with just the bottom part of that Reveal Will sentiment. And I'm going to use a simple hillside grass border die here just to cut the bottom. So I've got my scarecrow there just so I can see kind of where to place it. I don't want to place it too high. I don't want to cover up the detail of the scarecrow. So I'm just going to ink that piece as well with a scattered straw. And then the thing I think really makes it look like straw is using fossilized amber for the tops. I just think that is a great autumn straw kind of color. So you can see I'm using that for the top and then the scattered straw kind of blended out towards the bottom. Now I've got the wheel also cut from the same watercolor cardstock. And I'm just adding that tumble glass so that it's going to match the hole that we cut in the background. So I'm also going to add some of that shaded lilac just to the edges because that cutout is sort of where those two colors are coming together. So you can kind of check it there, see if you need to add some more ink. You don't have to do this, but I, I kind of like it being part of the sky. So I've got my other pieces of the reveal will cut out here, and then I cut the back piece from some storm cloud cardstock without the opening cut. And you can see I also have a storm cloud um, cardstock card base there, and that's why I use that for the back. So it's just going to kind of blend in with the card base, and you're not going to see it. So we can assemble our reveal wheel by putting the brad through the small circle, and then through the back of the one we inked. We're going to put some foam adhesive so that that brad sits up from the background here and then the little score lines in the circle you can just shift those up to the, where they're right out of the window and shift it to where it's right out of the little cut on the side. Once you kind of have it where it needs to be you can peel those liner pieces off of that foam and then perfectly line it up with that background piece that you cut and stick it down. So now I can take the wheel off when I'm ready to stamp. So to figure out where my sentiments are going to be, I need to trace this opening in. I'll just tell you right now, I traced it very, very lightly, so you're not really going to be able to see it very well in this video. I could barely see it to be quite honest, but I traced four and I turned the wheel a quarter turn each time. And once I have all four traced, I can take the wheel off the back piece so that it's flat when I'm ready to stamp. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment that goes above it, and this sentiment is from the Holiday Reveal Wheel Sentiments that says, Hope Your Fall Is, and it's two stamps, but I put them together, and I curve them to match the curve of that opening that's there. So now, because this was very lightly drawn in there, what I decided to do was sort of line up my outline with the hole, because I can see the hole a lot better than I could my outline, and I used that as my guide for stamping my sentiments. So the first one says, hope you follow is cozy. And then I'm just going to take those two pieces apart, and I'll realign the next window and stamp the next sentiment. So I also use the word sweet, and happy. And then the fourth sentiment actually comes from the original Reveal Will sentiment set and it says fabulous. So now that I've got those all stamped, I'm going to carefully erase those lines. This is partly why I traced them so lightly because I didn't want to rub off any of that inked color that I put on there when it came time to erase those. 
You could also stamp these first and then ink it possibly, but I inked it first. So now I can put the wheel back on and it should line up perfectly. So now I can start to assemble my little scene here. And I've put some foam adhesive on the back of that straw piece I made for the bottom. And I'm gonna use some thin foam adhesive for my scarecrow and some of these other pieces I'm using here. For the crow, I'm gonna put it on his arm just so they're sort of in the same plane. And then this is me figuring out where I wanted the corn. So I actually did not end up using the ones stamped with the sunflower ink. I used the artichoke and the carrot ones because I felt like the sunflower ones blended in with my background too much. And to make some shorter corn, I'm just trimming off those bottom pieces so that it can look sort of like it's in the background. And I can just tuck it behind that straw grass that I put in front. Now I trimmed that one off so it would fit behind his hand. Um, if I'd put the corn down first, I probably wouldn't have had that problem, but there was a piece of foam there. So I just trimmed that off and it's all hidden and you can't see it at all. And I'm just using my tweezers to help me tuck those things behind and get them out of the way. And I like how the corn on the two sides sort of hangs off the rectangle and sort of makes the scene go past this rectangle we've created. Now I'm adding in the pumpkins. And I'm adding another little crow at the bottom, which I think helps the bottom not look so orangey and yellowy. He brings a little relief to all that orange down there on the straw. And then there's the little curlicue on that pumpkin. So now I've got foam adhesive all over. I can put those two together. And now I can put that whole assembly onto my car base. And then finally, I took another scrap of that watercolor cardstock and cut some stitch clouds out of it. This is the small and the medium size one. And I just thought these would help fill out the top nicely. And since I've already got it on the card base, I'm just gonna kind of mark where I want to trim those off with a pencil and just cut them with my scissors. Normally I would trim it against the edge of the card base, but since this is a rectangle set in and it's already on the card, I thought that might be kind of hard to do. So I just trimmed them beforehand and then I will just place them on there, make sure my pencil line is erased, if any of it remains. And then I'll add that final little crow up in the sky. Finally, I'll add the little turn here from the Reveal Little Sentiments. And then here is the finished card. Have a hope your fall is cozy, fabulous, happy, and sweet. I just think it turned out so cute. I love that little scarecrow so much. I like to use him every fall as possible. And there is the finished card. So here's another look at it. And here's a close up. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.